for you tonight and the subsequent agreement between the City of Regina and the University of Regina Students Union. As an alumni of the, the University, I'm proud of the changes being proposed. I've been part of the sustainability planning at the campus and have encouraged many of the steps taken so far. This proposal goes a long way to dealing with the transportation and land use concerns both today and into the future. And so I'm proud of the students of, the, of my university wanting to invest in their community. My recommendation this, this evening is to have this agreement approved and these are my reasons. Uh, first of all, the proposed, uh, proposal values the future citizens of this city by investing in their education and their lives in this city. This proposal also values our investment in road infrastructure by <coughs> reducing the demands put on it by current trends in automobile use and therefore extending its life. This proposal puts little extra cost onto the taxpayers other than the initial investment in additional <coughs> transit buses, which I believe the city will get back over time. Number four, this proposal will enhance the entire transit system for all citizens, so not just the university student. And number five, this proposal will reduce the city's carbon footprint, which I think in these times uh, needs to be going down. This proposal also encourages the use of uh, public transportation now and into the future. And one that uh, I think hasn't been talked a little bit about tonight is this proposal will also make the University of Regina uh, more competitive with other universities <coughs> who have already invested in, in the new passes. Uh, number eight is this proposal will also respond to the demands of Regina residents, which I would support. And lastly, this proposal will also fulfill the objectives of the official community plan. Include at that point and answer any questions anyone has. Thank you, Mr. Elliott, for your presentation. Are there questions or delegation? Mr. Hawkins? Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for coming forward. You mentioned correctly, I believe, this proposal will enhance the entire transit system for all citizens, not just for the university students. Under this proposal, university students will be paying the whole freight, not all citizens, for the enhancement that will, will, uh, will benefit all citizens. Do you think that's fair, that the university students should be singled out for that kind of tax? Uh, first of all, I don't consider it a, a tax or a, an added cost. I see them as, as wanting to invest in their community, and this is one uh, effective way to of uh, putting forward a, a proposal to the city that both will enhance uh, their abilities or, or give them better choices in transportation, but it will also support uh, uh, expansion of the, of the city system into areas that uh, citizens currently can't get access to the transit. Do you see the 46% of students who voted against this proposal as wanting to invest in their community in this way I believe once uh, the, the pass is in place, and I th think this has been the case in many other cities, uh, once you have the option of using the bus, I'm, I'm confident that even though they may be uh, using their car, I suspect in, in many uh, days of 40 below in, in winter rather than spending a number of minutes or perhaps hours uh, warming their cars up that they'll say, hey, I've got this bus pass, I'll use it. And I think that's, uh, that's that will be trend in, in my mind from, from this point forward. And I think the, the concerns around the, uh, the bus pass will, will slowly uh, dissipate. So just so as I understand your position, I want you to tell me if you thought this wrong. You think that the students who are currently driving uh, at the university will be especially excited to use the bus on days when it's minus 40. I think it will give them the option. Um, now, the, the one thing that uh, you may also know is that a number of those people that, uh, that drive to the campus are outside of this, this bus pass and therefore won't, won't be obligated to, uh, to purchase a bus pass. So those that are say, driving from out of town or from New Star, that type of thing. So. 
say this proposal will reduce the city's carbon footprint. What are the assumptions you make when you make that statement? First of all, it, it will encourage a lot more uh, individuals uh, to use the bus. Uh, as I said, I think that they will augment their uh, the current uh, transportation option by said, for instance, maybe not buying a car or not buying that second car, they will go to uh, to using the bus uh, as their, their their second option or perhaps their first option. I also see, as, as has been explained uh, in a number of cities, uh, those uh, riders that that will use the bus in, in, in their university years will, in fact, not uh, go back to a, an automobile use afterwards, and therefore, in the long term, the carbon footprint you know, in, uh, of residents in the city will go down. So, it's your position. So as I understand, the U-Pass will take a sufficient number of cars off the road and will fill up buses to a sufficient uh, capacity that they'll reduce carbon footprint. Is that it? Uh, that's my belief, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councilor Hawkins. Are there any questions? Thank you very much again for the gallery and move on to our next delegation of two people, Devin Feeders and Tom Chase. You can Good identify job. yourself who you represent. You uh, together have uh, five minutes for presentation. Any other questions you might have to ask? Hey everyone. Uh, I'm here today. Uh, I'm Devin Peters, uh, President of the University of Regina Students Union, and I'm here today with Tom Chase, uh, Provost and Vice President of Academic at the University of Regina Student or University of Regina. I don't say uh, it goes too separately, but help me. Um, I'm here today to speak to the UPASS, to continue our discussion, we've, we've spoken to each other more than a few times, and um, to continue to provide clarification on um, the, the vast, uh, you know, massive information that's been uh, presented here over the past uh, year that we've been talking about this. Uh, first off, I'd like to discuss the terms. City councillors have previously brought up concerns about the sustainability of this agreement from our end. In particular, they've used the number 3,000, a number that I once postulated could be the very conservative high end for opt-outs at the University of Regina in an email conversation in conjunction with the low end of our membership estimates. I would like at this point to retract that number. After speaking to my colleagues at the U of S, it has become clear that my initial estimate of a worst case scenario was very high. This number is wrong for a few reasons. First, it included the possibility that 100% of students uh, from residents would opt out. Clearly, uh, we know that it isn't going to be the case. Many students living on campus have indicated that to me personally during the referendum by voting in favor, and have indicated to me um, since then that the notion of owning a car is either unattainable due to the cost for them, or unlikely because they're international students and it's going to take them nine plus months uh, to acquire a full license, thus rendering a car not very useful for them. We perceive it as being quite unlikely um, that those students will all left out, Additionally, at the U of S, the student demographic, uh, high rate of personal transit use, a rural catchment area, underdeveloped city transit program, it's all very similar to what it is at the U of R. Surprisingly for some, their membership numbers are also very similar. Uh, the U of S's Students Union has a membership of around 13.5 to 14,000 students, and URSU is around 11.5 to 12.5. Even so, their opt-out numbers in the first year were 549 students in the fall and 562 students in the winter. Looking at all the numbers, the opt-out percentage for the USSU Youth Pass program has never been more than 4.8% in a given semester. With information like that, URSU is even more comfortable than ever saying that our projections of the opt-out rates will allow us to support this program by establishing a levy in the $80 to $90 range, as we have indicated from the beginning of our negotiations. My second point addresses the questions that have been raised about the legitimacy of the Youth Pass referendum. Some criticism has been raised about the number of voters. For comparison, I've provided uh, on the list, it's in the package, and uh, if it's possible, I can put it up on the screen. I don't know how to use that thing. I'm oh, we know sure. on our... Okay. Um, but uh, suffice to say, uh, U of M and U of W both passed U pass programs last year and are moving towards implementation. Both of them had particip participation rates below ours. Uh, the U of S in particular had higher participation rates than ours. I applaud them for that. But I'll note them in particular 
as an interesting example because the first referendum was to do a trial of one year and it passed with a narrow margin, 58% to 42% opposed. In their second year, when they voted on the permanent program, students having experienced the benefits of the UPASS voted 80% in favor, 20% opposed. I think that this shows that students, once exposed to the UPASS, recognize that its benefit is very, very significant. Finally, uh, I'd like to touch on the period of time that the UPASS will be available. Uh, my understanding is currently that the agreement will continue through the exam period um, and include those that uh, would, uh, would well, that will be taking exams. Uh, finally, I'll pass it over to Tom Chase. About a minute left and you five minutes to go. How much? One minute. Thank you, I'll be very brief. Two quick things. Confidence, ask City Council to think of this as an investment in the future. In my previous job in Victoria, a similar measure was implemented some 12 or 13 years ago. Victoria now has a situation where city buses actually have pass-bys. They are so full of university students making their way to Camos and the Royal Roads and the University of Victoria. Let us envisage a city of Regina where students and indeed members of the general community recognize the benefits of public transit in a rapidly transforming city. Finally, the university, like the city of Regina, is changing before our eyes. I believe that this new pass is a marker of that change and I would encourage on behalf of the University of City Council to think of motivating that change, encouraging it, and making the city a better and more sustainable place to live. Thank you. Thank you very much for your, your presentation. Uh, other questions or delegation? Council Dow? Uh, thanks. Evening, gentlemen. Um, if I could begin with uh, Mr. Chase, if you don't mind. So, are you getting inundated with phone calls from students and parents about this at all? I'm not being inundated by phone calls from students. It would be uh, Mr. Peters, the president of the student union, who's inundated with phone calls from students. <coughs> okay, so not, I'm going to say, and I mean this in all due respect, not getting satisfaction with them, not turning to the university, so it's clearly owned by the student union. That's what I I think I'm hearing from the university administration has confidence in the way that the student union has handled this issue. Thank you very much. So I'm going to say that again in a form of a question. You're comfortable with the way the referendum run, and it was similar to other referendums that the university has run? We are entirely comfortable. Thanks very much. If I get to go to Mr. Peters now, please. Right. Mr. Peters, um, if I, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that before we began this uh, old discussion about a U-Pass, it was you, the students' union, that came to us for discussion. Am I correct that you initiated that? Uh, yeah, we came here a year ago. Right. So you initiated it. We did not initiate it. Uh, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to just go back to what a couple of the delegations said. I think you corrected the notion of the timeline. This was part of the negotiation. So the part of the school year that is covered was part of the negotiations. And are you comfortable with the period of time that is covered? Yes, um, to expand on that just a little, my current understanding is that it will go from the beginning of September to the end of uh, December, um, and then from the 1st of January to the end of April, which would be the end of the exam period. So uh, under that, students would be covered. So it's basically just the summer months not covered? Yeah, and that's just because the economies of scale don't work in the summer. I appreciate that. Thanks very much. Uh, one of the other delegations talked about where the buses don't go currently in the city. Was it not part of the negotiations and part of your understanding? And part of my understanding of the fact some of the routes will be extended. I use Harbor Landing as an example, Elgin to the east as well, to help serve the university. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, in addition, we are hoping to add some extra service to the northwest portion of the city. So I think uh, it's a benefit for all points. That's right. I forgot about that one. Thanks very much. Um, would you suggest that uh, a part of the service enhancement that the university students union acknowledges is that other people in the community will be able to ride those same buses, get some benefit out of it, contribute to the cost of the service, and have better transit? Absolutely. Are you okay with that, by the way? I'm very happy about it. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Thank you Council Donald. Council Young. Thank you, Worship. Um, thank you, Mr. Peters and Mr. Chase. My question is, I had a one phone call about this, and this is in my area uh, where the parking is difficult because of the number of cars that university students drive. And there was some misunderstanding from the caller about the fact that uh, students would be, would be charged for this. Um, and uh, she was not aware that URSU charges for several things um, and that not all students use all the things that, that URSU um, uh, 
uh, receives from them as part of the cost. So could you list some of those things that they also pay for <coughs> and may yeah. not use? Absolutely. So um, students, uh, as part of their membership at the University of Regina, pay tuition as well as a number of related fees. And so um, that includes everything from the health and dental plan, um, the, uh, the intramural fee, uh, even if they don't participate in intramurals, uh, the uh, fitness center fee, which is actually paid to the University of Regina, uh, which pays for the gym upstairs. Uh, we have fees that go towards sponsoring refugees, as was recently highlighted in uh, the newspapers. Uh, the University of Regina is matching that. It's very exciting. Um, we see sponsorship uh, or funds from uh, students go towards supporting uh, individual faculties uh, and their student societies so that they can put on events. So that uh, even though the University of Regina Students Union funds events for engineers, that doesn't necessarily mean that the ed students are going to the engineering parties, right? Um, so we, we have a large variety of cross subsidization, and students pay for a lot of services. Um, and this would be another one in that portfolio. And what would happen if you didn't collect for those services? It, it would be very damaging to campus life. Um, students would have less opportunities to lead, less opportunities to experience, and less opportunities to meet new people and form the community that we love. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chase, I, I know that you take the bus every day. <laughs> and so my, so my question is probably a futuristic question. I'm, I'm wondering if any thought has been given to um, others being able to uh, have some kind of a pass who work at the university, staff who maybe do not uh, teach, as well as staff who do teach and um, part of the administration to, it, has there been any talk or thought about that? Thank you for your question, Councilor, uh, Councilor Young. When I take the uh, 615 number three out to campus, I'm on that bus with a variety of people, including some of the people who've been working and putting together the new residence towers, Kizik Towers, as well as people who have employment later in the route as they head down toward the south end of town. We have a program at the university by which employees can use payroll deduction for a tax pass. We intend to continue to push this because our overall goal is to reduce the campus's dependence, whether it is students, students and residents, faculty and staff, on parking facilities and on individual cars. The number of individual cars coming down Wasgata Parkway each day with one person in each is not acceptable. And as part of our campus sustainability plan over the next five years, we want to reduce that. This is a big part of that effort. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Young. Councilor Feigl. Thanks, and uh, welcome again. Um, you brought up a point that the residents will start to use the pass. Um, typically the residents are three year, three semester. A lot of them stay and go to school all summer as well. Would, have, have they been asked about the summer pass extending into from instead of just the eight months to 12 months? Um. I, I would say, and, and maybe you can back me up on this, I don't think categorizing the majority of residents students as being um, three-year graduates uh, would be accurate. I, I think uh, our five-year graduation rates in the 60s. <coughs> but anyways, <laughs> um, regardless, I don't think that, I, or I have, I have heard from a few students that they'd be interested in having a summer, but I've explained to them that our summer enrollment, though it's increased a lot over the last few years, and Tom can speak to that, uh, I don't think that it would uh, support a UPASS program currently. Okay, that, I was just wanted to clarify that because there is there is that group of people that go for three or four years and go hard, and then you don't have to stay five. Yeah. So I just wondered about that. With your permission, your worship, sure. our summer enrollment in the summer approximately five to six thousand. Our peak period is now well over fourteen thousand. Okay. So there's quite a dramatic difference. Okay. Good. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. Other questions of the delegation. Thank you very much for coming to the gallery. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, good evening, and uh, uh, good evening to Your Worship and City Council. Uh, as a staff person at the University of Regina, uh, the U Pass will indirectly make my commute to work. Uh, much better, so I hope Council implements it as soon as they can. Thank you. I can now take questions. Thank you for that. That's very short. 
Questions of the uh, delegation? Councilor Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Klein, I never thought I'd say it, but you're a man of few words. Um, I'm just wondering, can you can you elaborate how it make your, you're not a student. So not a student, you, no. Uh, you Thanks. Uh, I take the bus uh, regularly in the winter, and the number three is one of the routes I take most often. So if there's more connecting buses from downtown, I can make my transfer more reliably, more quickly. Okay, thanks. Thank you, uh, Councilor Frazier. Other questions on the delegation? Thank you very much for your, your presentation.